I'd really push that boat out as far into the harbour as maybe it should have gone, you know? I just wanted the girls to go home. I wasn't going to make them happy. All I wanted at this stage of the evening was to have me coke wank. Now, if you don't know what a coke wank is, let me explain. When you take about a gram of cocaine or so and you get home and you're laying in bed and your friends are gone and the sun's about to come up and the depression's about to set in, <laughs> you masturbate for around four hours. <laughs> now, this sounds excessive, and it is, but don't think you're in just in 58 minutes, you're in fucking agony, because the cum's right at the end of your cock, but the nerve centre in your brain refuses to pass the message on to shoot it out, and that's what keeps you at the table like a bad gambler. <laughs> now, the most important thing with a coke wank is to keep your focus. You lose your focus, you're fucked. You've hit the reset button, you've got to start again. I'll tell you how I do it. I lay on the bed, with my laptop really high up on my chest, with the battery burning into my ribcage. I put the most horrific porn I can find on the screen, which often is just women punching each other. I put my hand behind the screen so I don't have to see how violently I'm fucking myself. Then through cuts, abrasions and, and bruises and using tears as lube, Eventually you will come, but you're so dehydrated it doesn't come out in a fluid state. You just shoot like these six gelatin chunks. <laughs> now ordinarily, when you come on your chest, it's best to get a towel and mop it up, but this stuff just roll in a ball and chuck. <laughs> then after you come, you realise something you didn't know before. You're almost dead. Your heart's beating at a very irregular pace. Your mouth's like cotton. So you peel yourself off the mattress to get water. But your thighs are cramping up. You walk away, you turn around, you see a sweaty outline of your body on the sheet. And it looks like the Shroud of Turin. Anyway. I was looking forward to doing that. <laughs> so I said to the girls, I said, ah, oh, you can go home. And the big girl went, but I still want to get fucked. And I went, ah, oh, you're more of a package deal. Now, as soon as I said it, <laughs> as soon as I said it, I felt like a fucking asshole, right? One of the great things about being an offensive comic is you can cover your steps very quickly by going, ah, I'm kidding, I'm crazy, Wah. <laughs> You, I'd love you, I'm kidding, I'd love it, Wah. <laughs> But I can't fuck you in front of your friend. And she points at her friend and goes, you get in the bathroom while I fuck him. And I went, eh, eh. I, I can't see why that wouldn't work. Now I've got a fuck, it'd be rude not to. You can't be willing to fuck someone in a couple and not be willing to fuck them as an individual. That's bad manners, and my mother brought me up better than that. <laughs> so I'm going to fuck this girl, to be polite. <laughs> and her friend didn't want to go into the bathroom, and she's like crying, and her friend's like pushing her, like, just get in the fucking bathroom. This big fat girl just pushing this hot girl, like, get in the fucking bathroom. And I'm so wasted, I'm getting involved, like, yeah, get in the bathroom. <laughs> And so we push this hot girl into the bathroom. She sits on the toilet, she's crying. She's so hot and she's crying like, Aah. then she turns her hairdryer on so she doesn't have to listen. So picture like, there's this hot girl, she's crying, she's holding her hairdryer. Just, Aah. Aah. Anyway, that gave me an erection. So now I've got an erection. <laughs> Big question, do I wear a condom? And the answer is no. I was on too many drugs to come. No one's getting fucking pregnant. And let's be honest, 18-year-old Canadian who'd never seen cocaine, let's go out on a limb and say she doesn't have AIDS. <laughs> and even if she did have AIDS, it wouldn't be the aggressive AIDS. It would be a soft, gentle, girly AIDS. It probably wouldn't kill me. <laughs> so I got on top of her. I told her I was a premature ejaculator, so I didn't have to fuck her for too long. Because I knew I wasn't going to come, right? So I put my cock in her for like 10 thrusts. I went, 
And I just pulled out and went, ah. <laughs> and she went, what was that? And I went, oh, I just came over there. And she goes, no, you didn't. I went, yes, I did. There's uh, heaps of it over there. <laughs> I wouldn't go over there, you'll get pregnant. <laughs> it looks like a Jackson Pollock painting over there. <laughs> anyway, then we let a friend out of the bathroom. The girls got dressed and they went home. Now that should be the end of the story, but it's not five years ago. Now this year, I went back to Just For Last Comedy Festival in Montreal and I wasn't supporting some movie star. I was, I was in the big theatre myself and, and, and when I finished the show, I went to the stage door and there was people waiting for my autograph and at the end of the queue was the hot girl all of these years later and I took her back to my hotel and I fucked her. Now, the reason I tell you this story is because you should never give up on your dreams. <laughs>